Welcome to Old Classic Car and this the fourth quiz to test your knowledge of classic cars, British cars in particular. As in previous quizzes, 50 heavily cropped photos are shown one at a time and you have 15 seconds to jot down your answer before the full photo and identification is given. Keep a note of your scores and let us know your results in the comments if you're able to. So grab a piece of paper and fire up your pencil sharpener. Here goes with classic car number one. Best of luck. Okay, here goes. So, what car we're we looking at here? Question number one. This was a very common car in the 1950s, but what is it in particular? And here's the answer to question number one. It's the Ford Prefect E493A. Okay, in the car number two now. What car are we looking at here? Um, this was produced in several versions over the years. Uh, from this close-up cropped version of the photograph, it could be one of two variants, either will do. But do you know what we are looking at here? And the answer is the Series 3 version of the Jaguar XJ6 or the XJ12. Either answer will do. Like I say, tot up your scores as you go along, and if you're able to, pop a note in the comments and let us know your final score. Number three, what are we looking at here? This uh, car featured in a fairly recent upload to the channel in 2022. Uh, this was at Alton Park, there's a bit of a clue, but what car is this? It is the Ford Anglia 105E. Uh, the car in the foreground is very much a base model. You can see the chrome rear light surrounds on the cars just next to it, the Anglia Supers, but this is very much a base model in the foreground. Fourth car, um, to the pre-war years, just about. What car are we looking at here, complete with blackout regulations very much in evidence? And it is a pre-war Morris 8 Series 2. The Series 1 had the chrome radiator surrounding the spoked wheels and the Series 2 was revised somewhat and that's the car you can see here. Number five in this classic car quiz, somewhat later, quite a lot more recent. This was an interim model for this particular manufacturer in the 1960s. But what car are we looking at here? And it is the Jaguar 420, very much based on the S-Type. But it has a 4.2 litre version of the XK engine and a bluff front that would go on um, on the Series 1 XJ6, which came along shortly afterwards. Next up, a Sporting GT. A uh, very fine car indeed, a rear three-quarter view, but what car is this one? And it is the Jensen CV8, mainly fiberglass bodied, but I think the doors were aluminium, or at least aluminium skinned, and a Chrysler V8 engine under the bonnet. This one from 1965. Next up, what is this particular car? Here's the answer. This was at the National Motor Museum at Bewley. It's a Ford Constant Mark I convertible. Quite a rare machine there. Number eight in this quiz about classic British cars. Uh, somewhat smaller at the same venue, but what car are we looking at here? Quite right, a back to basics machine designed for the budget conscious motorist, and it is the Reliant Regal Mark I. Number nine now. Now, if you get this one, um, well done because it's a quite an obscure car. I'll give you a clue. The manufacturer was based in Manchester, um, but what car are we looking at here? And it is the Crossley Burnie Streamline. If you find your way into the image archive section of the main old classic car website, you'll see some lovely old photos that I found of one of these. Very original photos taken in the 1930s. Uh, I highly recommend you have a look. Right, question number 10. Bonnet raised, but on what car? And there's your answer. It's an MG Magnet. Number 11 now, rear three-quarter view. What make and model and variant, in fact, are we looking at here? The little badges on the rear corner may give it away. 
and it is the standard Vanguard Estate. This was based on the Phase 3, or probably the revised Phase 3, the Vignali, um, which was a revised version of the Phase 3, but either will do. Number 12, um, drifting into light commercials just for a moment here, um, but I'm sure many of you will recognise this little gem, but what is it? It is the BMC, Austin Morris, etc. JU250. This one's in minibus guys, but obviously you could get vans and pickups and so on. Um, but yeah, it's the JU250. Number 13. These cars feature quite regularly on the old classic car channel in various video uploads, photo compilations, old photos and so on. But what are we looking at here? Specifically, which model is it? And it is the Ford Prefect 107E. That little reverse dogleg piece of chrome on the front wing signifies that this is the overhead valve 107E as opposed to the side valve 100E. Bright red beauty here, we spotted this one at an evening meet very recently, but what is it? And it is a Sunbeam Stiletto, not market version of the Hillman Imp. Let me know in the comments if these are too easy, too difficult, just about right. Obviously everyone's different, but let me know. Right, number 15. This was seen at the same evening classic car meet, but what car are we looking at here? A very handsome machine and I'd really quite happily run one of these. It is a lovely example of the Austin A95 Westminster. What a Bobby Dazzler that is. Okay, next up, what is this particular car? We've had cars from this manufacturer already in this classic car quiz, but what make and model are we looking at here? This was at the Chumley Castle classic car show several years back. It is the Ford Zodiac Mark II, a very bonny example it is too. Still on its original registration, which is good to see. Another beauty in two-tone blue or grey here. There should be enough to identify this particular car. So what is it? It's a Wolseley 6110. One of the big Farinas, big six-cylinder engine in that one. Very comfortable machine indeed. Next up, a rear three-quarter view of something a little more sporty. And there should be just enough information in that clip there to identify this particular car. But do you know what it is? And there's your answer. It is a TVR Tasmin. Okay, carry on with these British cars. This was a, a very popular site throughout the 1980s and into the 1990s even. Uh, but what is it? It was a revised version of another equally popular, if not great, car. And it is the Morris Ital, or Ital, which was a reskinned, revised version, of course, of the Morris Marina. Let me know in the comments if you've ever run one of these or any of the cars that are featured here. Always like to read your thoughts. Number 20 now, an open top car, same meeting, but what is it? A very different car, obviously, but what are we looking at here? It is a Lotus Elan Plus 2 in rare convertible form. red gem here should be enough information here to identify if you look closely especially around the right hand side that should give you a clue as to a particular model of car that we are looking at here and it is the MGTF that's just the uh, updated version of the TD of course and the headlamps were built into the front wings that's the giveaway on this particular close-up number 22 beauty in brown Available in many different colours in the 1970s, but what are we looking at here? It is, of course, the Triumph Stag. Really handsome machine, 3 litre V8 of Triumph's own design under that bonnet. Car 
R23 a little bit more later, a lot more recent in date, but what is it? And the answer is the booted Ford Orion, the booted version of the Ford Escort, Mark IV, I believe. We're three quarter of you of another classic British car here, but what is it? Four door versions were also available, as was an estate, but here we've got the two door saloon version. Quite a rare sight now, and it is the Vauxhall Viva HB. On original wheels, but otherwise looks fairly standard. It's even got a Webasto type full length sunroof. A close up now of a front three quarter angle now let's have a look so obviously old British car from the 1950s but is there enough there to identify it and there you go it's a Humber Hawk very original example of this particular car seen as an evening classic car meet earlier in this year 2022 halfway through now question 26 is there enough here to identify this one And it is the Mark III version of the Triumph GT6. Obviously the rear panel is very similar to that of the Mark IV and 1500 Spitfire, but on those cars the fuel filler isn't in the rear wing, it's on the top of the middle rear panel. So it had to be a GT6. Okay, close-up car now. What is this particular vehicle? It is fairly patinated version of the Bentley T1, the Bentley version of the Rolls-Royce Silver Shadow. Question number 28, what are we looking at here? There are several cars produced by this manufacturer that looked quite similar from this angle, so you'll have to look at the details to be sure about this one. And it is the Morris Oxford MO. From the crop down view you might think it's a Morris Minor, but the rounded off corners at the top of the window door frames are the giveaway that it's not a Minor. The Minor had square edges. Back end of a car now from the 1960s. Very popular machine, top of the tree pretty much I think, and this manufacturer's range at this time, but what car is it? It is the Vauxhall Viscount. Got a rare survivor indeed. About 1967 or early 68. Well, we're up to question number 30 already. Well done for sticking with it. Um, but what are we looking at here? What particular car is this? Again, various variations were available, so I need the specific model. And it is the Daimler Sovereign in Series 1, guys. The different rear boot plinth is the giveaway that it was a Daimler as opposed to the Jaguar. This one should be fairly straightforward for anyone that was a fan of sporty coupes in the 1960s and 1970s and in fact into the 1980s. But this is a 1970s example and it is the Mark II version of the Ford Capri. Okay, carry on with this test of your classic car's knowledge. What are we looking at here? These were very common cars back in the day, but convertible versions, much less so. And this particular car, seen at Western Park, is a convertible, a rare convertible version of the Vauxhall Cavalier Mark II. Number 33, a little bit older now. Manufacturer that's long since disappeared into the mists of time. What car are we looking at here? This was a revised version of a real quality machine. And it is the Armstrong Sidley Star Sapphire. The previous Sapphire had a slightly taller radiator grille extended onto the front of the bonnet, but the Star Sapphires were slightly shorter, and that's what we're looking at here. Number 34, quite a rakish machine, based on much more humble underpinnings, but what car is this one?
It is a Sunbeam Rapier, based of course on the contemporary Hillman Minx. But a two-door coupe, you can wind all the side windows down and you've got that lovely pillarless styling, very much American in influence. Number 35, not too far to go now, to the 1970s, but what make and model are we looking at here? This car is a Triumph TR7, a drop head coupe. Quite a rare shade of beige. Don't think I've seen too many in that colour. Question 36. Much, much older car now, but there should be enough there to identify this particular one. And it is an Austin 7 Chummy. This was seen at a vintage sports car club meet at Alton Park a few years ago. Just the roof of this particular car, question number 37, so what we're we looking at here. It should be fairly clear, I would have thought. Many different versions of this car offered, the estate, the van, convertible and saloon. And it is the Triumph Herald Estate. In this case, it's a Herald 1360 estate. Uh, but you could also get the 1200 before that. Number 38, another open top car now. Uh, very similar roof to the Triumph Stag, in fact, but what car is this particular one? There's your answer, the Reliant Scimitar GTC. This one was based on the SE6, big 3 litre V6 Ford engine under the bonnet there, fiberglass bodywork. Number 39, back to the pre-war years, pre-war days. Uh, this was at Alton Park, again at a VSCC meeting. But what car are we looking at here? There is a bit of a clue actually. Um, but make a model, please. And it is the Austin 7 Ruby, BFJ143. Staying with pre-war cars, or in fact just post-war, this particular car was produced either side of the war. Uh, there were a few detailed differences, the grille changed before and after the war, and there were a few differences under the bonnets, but this is a Morris 10 Series M, again spotted at Alton Park. Number 41, we're on the home straight now. Should be enough here to identify this particular car. And there's your answer. This one was photographed down in Hastings. If you've seen the video I did looking at classic plants that was on the beach around Hastings, various crawlers and so on, um, you'll have seen a quick snapshot of this particular car, 1965 Moggy 1000. Number 42 now, this was down at the Dover Transport Museum, of which there is also a video on the channel if you go and have a look. Um, if you've seen it, you may remember what this particular car is, and it is a rare Wolseley 690. Quite a rare survivor indeed. That's a great little museum that is. Have a look for the video, like I say Dover Transport Museum, if you've not seen it yet. Okay, another gem here. This was down at Brooklands. Again, there is a video on the channel about our visit to Brooklands in 2021. This is a non-Brooklands era car, but what is it? There's your answer. It's a fixed head coupe version of the wonderful Jaguar XK150. Um, it had been raining. The sun just came out in time for this particular photograph, which is why the car is quite wet in this shot. What a great looking car that is. One of the period photographs now, this one has appeared in one of the photo compilations that I've uploaded previously, question number 44, quite a rare drop head version of what car? And it is the Hillman Minx, a convertible version of the Hillman Minx, probably about 1950, 51, somewhere around about that point in time. Very much a classic British car of the era, as is this, question number 45. Obviously a Mercedes in the background, but what is the main car that we're looking at here? And there we go, it's a rally prepared Austin 1800. You can also get the Morris version of this particular car, and the doors, I believe, were shared with the Austin Maxi. 
just a few more cars to go close in of a rear view of a particular vehicle not so much a car but what is it this was at the uh, Goodwood Revival a few years ago there we go it's a BMC minivan complete with Austin J40 pedal car on the roof no less how fantastic is that Okay, not too far to go now. Question number 47. What car are we looking at here? It's a very popular British car in the 1960s. Very, very few of them survive now. Um, do you know what it is? And there is your answer. This is the Vauxhall Viva HA. Really smart example, this one. The Morris are long side, of course, but the Vauxhall is much, much rarer. Number 48. Back to the 1950s. Uh, do you know what this is? There were several cars produced by this manufacturer. It looked kind of similar. But there's enough detail here to identify this particular model very specifically. And it is the Austin A40 Somerset. This was the replacement for the Austin A40 Devon, but still with the Devon's 1200cc pre B series engine under the bonnet. Column gear shift, rear wheel drive. Not a bad little car. What do we have here? Complete with no tech blue spot lamp on the front. The hubcaps aren't original by the way, so don't go off those. The answer is the Austin A55 Cambridge. That was question number 49. And rounding out this classic cars quiz, we have question number 50. What is this? This is a bit of an obscure one, I grant you, but if you've ever been to the uh, British Motor Museum at Gaydon and had a wander around some of the collection there, you may just remember what this particular car is. It's the Road Rover Series 1 prototype. Um, this is when Land Rover were beginning to think about a more comfortable uh, road-oriented version of the Land Rover, which eventually, of course, became the Range Rover in much later years. So. That was all 50 questions in this, the old classic car car quiz. Um, let me know in the comments how you got on. Was it too easy? Was it too difficult? Have you owned any of these classic cars? Do you wish to own one of them even? Um, or would you never touch one with a barge pole? Thanks very much for giving it a whirl. Let me know in the comments, like I say, how you got on. And there'll be more videos and more quizzes very, very soon. So bye for now.